The story of tech tycoon John McAfee has captivated viewers and journalists alike. Be it his stunning wealth from his antivirus software to the reports of a gun and drug-filled life in Belize, Mr. McAfee has been remarkably willing to discuss the lower details of his life. In an interview on HuffPost Live on May 23rd, he did just that, answering direct questions openly. But was it truthfully? Analysts at Q Verity, a deception detection firm, sent us an unsolicited analysis of the interview. We've asked them to join us to discuss their findings, along with other experts in the field. Don, you performed this analysis. I'm just curious, what was your interest in the interview? Well, the interest was simply, uh, it was happenstance, really. One of our partners, uh, Susan Carnicero, former CIA officer, happened to see your interview, and she brought it to the team's attention and said, you know, you guys got to see this. This is classic. This is textbook. So uh, so we took a look at it and decided to uh, write up an analysis and put it, post it on our website. You know, we, we we're the first ones to say there's no such thing as a human lie detector. We certainly don't think of ourselves that way, but we certainly have tools that we can use that can make us much more effective at telling whether or not someone is telling the truth. I asked Mr. McAfee to tell us what happened to him in Belize, and he said that refusing to bribe the government started his problems. Let's take a look. I then went to the international press, to the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, whoever would listen to me and says, look, you know, this is, this is not right. There's something, something bizarre going on. That was mistake number two. That pissed everybody off, the prime minister, the government, the police, uh, and they began a program of harassment, uh, ending with uh, the death of my neighbor, which they conveniently <coughs> tried to finger me. They didn't at any time say that, I, that I, I killed the man or I had anything to do with it. They wanted to question me as a neighbor. All right, Don, so now we've all looked at it with this lens. Right. What, what did you see there that triggered alarms okay. for you? First of all, you had the, the hand uh, head activity. Okay. That was, in fact, that was the first one. That was 242 minutes and 40 seconds into that interview. That's the first time that he did that, when he started talking about the, uh, the death of his neighbor, okay? Then you had that, that throat clearing. He those two coughs when he mentioned the death of his neighbor. Uh, this is a, a, a nonverbal indicator, a, a significant throat clearing uh, happens again uh, in, is, uh, in response to anxiety, okay? Uh, there's a dryness of the throat. Or people would do this if they're dressing up the lie, you know, a clearing of the throat to, uh, to make the lie more presentable. But then uh, what was interesting is you had the attack behavior. He attacked the government for fingering him. But then an inconsistent statement in the same breath. He said, the government fingered me for this, but then they didn't accuse me any, of anything. They didn't say that I did it. So very, he's very conflicted in this. 